Welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are continuing our 2023 external exams playlist for general maths in Queensland. And it's paper two, complex questions. This is question six on bivariate data. Now, before we get into it, I just want to tell you a little bit more about how you can engage here at McClutchy Maths. Firstly, like and subscribe. Hit that notifications bell so you'll always know when the next video is coming live. Why not consider super like as well? We spend a lot of time and money and personal resources to get these videos ready for you to watch for free. Why not consider giving back a dollar or two to say thanks? You could also tell someone about this video. Why don't you tell us in the comments how you found it? You could um, share it on your OneNote page or even forward the link to some friends on social media. And speaking of social media, we're on Facebook and Instagram. Join us there. All right, let's get into question six worth seven marks. So this is an important one as well. The table shows the average superannuation account balance for workers of various ages in two different industries. The coefficient of determination, R squared, for age versus account balance is 0.95 for industry A and 0.96 for industry B. 40-year-old Lee works in the industry for which age explains a higher percentage of the account balance variation. Tony is 10 years older than Lee and works in the other industry. We're using linear models to predict the difference in the current superannuation account balances for Lee and Tony. Now, this also would be, I think, a complex, unfamiliar question. Firstly, because it's, um, it's talking about bivariate data here, but also they've thrown in that word superannuation, which is automatically gonna make you think it's a financial maths question. And I guarantee some people have jumped straight onto those financial maths questions and tried to use a formula there for an annuity, because we know that a superannuation is an annuity. However, it's nothing to do with that at all. It's purely about bivariate data. Um, so we're told this coefficient of determination R squared is 0.95 for industry A and 0.96 for industry B. So we can put that information in there and work out who is who. So firstly, Lee works in the industry for which age explains a higher percentage of the account balance variation. That's a very complex way of saying Lee works in the industry with the higher R squared and the higher R squared is 0.96. So Lee needs to be working for industry B. So um, we're going to pop that in here because 9.95 is less than 0.96. So there's Lee there, which means that's got to be Tony. Once we've identified who's who, we get our first mark. Okay, now this is a, a question that really just requires those reading skills. And that's probably the hardest thing of this question is working out what they want to know and what they want you to do. So understanding what that actually means. All that's saying is higher percent explains a higher percentage. That just means coefficient of determination, what one's higher? Well, industry B is higher, that's Lee. Okay, our next step. They want us to use linear models, models plural. That means we're going to have to find the A and B value for each of these um, versus their age and use those to actually come up with equations, the least squared regression line for Lee and for B. Sorry, for Lee and for Tony. Okay, so we're going to pull our calculators out and get those A and B values. And we're going to start with Tony's. Okay, so for Tony, we're going to find the A and B values to come up with the equation. I'm on a Casio calculator today. Hopefully, if you've got a different calculator, you know how to use it by now. If not, go and watch a video. Okay, so click on Mode Setup, number two for statistics, number two for bivariate data, and we're going to enter the ages and the balances of the um, superannuation for Tony. So let's jump in and do that. Okay, now that I've entered my data, I'm going to press the All Clear button, come over to Shift, number one, and I want number five option for regression. And I can see here I've got my values for A and B. So number one, A equals minus 205,520. All clear again, shift, one, five, and two for B. Write these down when you get the answers. B is equal to 7,910. So we've written those down and we found that Tony's values for A and B were here. We're now gonna make that into equation. Now you know our model that we use is y equals a plus bx. Now after the year 2025, the QCAA formula sheet is going to be reverting to y equals mx plus c. So m being your gradient is equal to b, 
and C being your y-intercept is equal to A. So if you're watching this after 2025 and you're seeing these A's and B's and don't know what's going on, I will create a video that will explain that further. Go and jump into that video and have a look at that if you need more information. It's just different letters for the same things. Okay, so we're gonna pop those informations into our calculator. We get this equation here. This is Tony's equation. And we get our second mark for getting Tony's equation for industry A correct. Now we need to do the same thing for Lee on the calculator. Okay, so let's put in the ages again and industry B. Now I can actually do a shortcut for this. Rather than retyping everything, I'm gonna go back in here to st stat one. Number two is my data, because the ages aren't changing. What I can do is simply override um, each of these values here. And if you know your calculator a little bit, then little shortcuts like this can save you some great time. However, if you didn't know about this um, shortcut, you would simply have to go and start again from scratch um, and retype those in. Okay, now that I've done that, shift one, five regression again, A is equal to negative 243,440 for Lee, and B, option two, press the equals button, is 9,570. So we've got Lee's A and B values because we wrote those down. Now we're gonna put those into our equation of Y equals A plus BX and we've got our equation and our next mark. We're halfway. So now what we've done is we've found these linear models. But now what we need to do is we need to predict the difference in superannuation balances for Lee and Tony. Okay, so first of all, um, this means we need to substitute their current ages to get their current balance in there. Now, you might think, well, we're told Lee's 40. That's somewhere in here. I can guesstimate that he, it might be about $92,000 and just write that down. That's not going to be good enough because they've told us they want us to use a linear model, not to guesstimate or interpolate in between. So that's not good enough. We have to actually use the models we've created. Okay, so estimating from that table is not appropriate. Okay, so for Tony, we know Tony is 10 years older than Lee. 40 plus 10 makes um, Tony 50 years old. Um, we're going to substitute X equals 50. So where you see the 50, we're going to replace that um, with that, that X there. So these numbers stay the same. That becomes multiplied because these are multiplied together. Working that out on the calculator, we know that um, the value of Tony's super balance right now is $180,980. Okay, so we now have got our next mark because we substitute x equals 50, Tony's age, into the right equation. And we've worked out his balance. Now we need to repeat for Lee. Okay, so there's Lee's equation there. We know Lee's 40. So we're going to substitute x equals 40 into the equation. Um, once again, we're going to work that out and we're going to work out that Lee's super balance is $139,360. So we get our next mark there for substituting x equals 40 into the industry B equation. We're almost there. So we've used the linear models to predict the current account balances, but we haven't predicted the difference. So now what we need to do is do that prediction. We've got the two balances here. Difference means subtraction. Let's take them away and we get $50,620. And we've achieved our next mark for calculating the difference in those current account balances for Tony and Lee. There's also a seventh mark in this question for showing that logical organization communicating those communicating key steps. So things like using dollar signs, things like um, explaining what you're doing, labeling up here that one is Tony, one is Lee. You could have even labeled these with your correlation coefficients, um, sorry, coefficients of determination. You could have shown why you've made that decision. So all of these steps, using your words to explain what you're doing as you're going is all about communicating things in a clear way. And it makes it so much easier for the market to understand what you're doing. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to engage with us with those methods that we talked about at the beginning of the video. Like and subscribe, notifications, bell, super like, sharing it with somebody and so on. And if you've got any questions at all, contact us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com.
Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Well, thank you so much for watching today. I'm Emily McClatchy. Have an amazing day. Thank you.